how did I get involved in glass blowing? <laughs> it goes back to probably my freshman year of college when I saw uh, the show called How It's Made. And um, on it, they were making these kind of uh, juicer, hand juicer things. Uh, and I had no idea that glass could be melted, that glass could be a liquid and be manipulated like that. So seeing that on that show kind of was eye-opening for me in terms of the fact that we could manipulate glass. Um, and then about six months later, I saw an article in the Times or the Newsday or something that spoke about my, who would then become my glass blowing teacher, Kevin, uh, that his studio was having an open house where you could come and check out classes being taught and things that uh, people made and all that kind of stuff. My favorite thing to make is all of the things. Right now I'm making these bubbly paperweight things that I really enjoy making just because of the depth of them. For making anything, the process, it starts out exactly the same, where you have a rod or a blowpipe that you heat the end of it up um, and you go into the furnace to gather um, some glass. I would get one or two gathers of glass and if I was going to put in some kind of design or color, I would get that kind of straight away while the glass is still nice and molten. Um, I would then melt all of that stuff back in together um, in the glory hole which uh, is basically a reheating oven. And a lot of our time is spent going between the bench, where all the tools are, um, and where I can sit and manipulate the glass, um, back and forth to the glory hole, where I can reheat the glass to get hot enough so that I can then work it again. But start with a little bubble, um, and then uh, kind of manipulate the glass to cool the end of it while heating up uh, this the glass that's closest to me um, and we do that because uh, when you're in the glory hole the end of the glass gets actually hotter than so the glass that's farthest away from me gets the hottest um, and so we actually want to counteract that and so we use things like the paddle or compressed air or other cold metal tools to chill the bottom while heating up um, what would eventually be the lip of the glass um, and then we begin to shape it. So we put in a score line, basically right off of the end of the pipe. Um, and that will be the basis for what we call the neck of the piece. Um, and then again, eventually that will be the lip of the glass. Um, and so we put that score line in that will allow us to break it free from the blowpipe when we eventually attach the punty, uh, which is the rod where we, uh, what we use for how to finish the pieces almost all pieces and um, so basically once we blow the bubble out nice and evenly and put in our jack line then we start to shape it So we go back in, we get it nice and hot, we flatten out the top, um, shape it a little bit more depending on your ultimate shape done. We go in for one or two what we call flashes, which is a three to five to seven second blast of heat. Um, not enough to get the glass soft again, but just enough to even out the heat. Then we go to the annealing oven. Uh, we put in our piece into the annealing oven and this annealing oven is about 900 degrees. 
So everything we do goes into this annealing oven uh, and cools down for a period of about 10 hours, 12 hours, uh, from 900 to about room temperature. So basically opening the annealing oven every morning is like Christmas because you get to see all of the cool things that you made the day before. Um, and so that's the basic process. That's the basic process.